Government boats with government radar and government GPS often can't even be tracked by the government. Oh my God, shocker. Uh, So (laughs) public service announcement, the government is not what it seems. Go figure. Welcome to Uncensored Tactical, where our goal is to talk about training, tactics, and more without being limited by red tape or a sterile bureaucratic environment so that we can bring you value and insight in a way that other organizations just plain can't. Okay, episode 172. How would a modern underground railroad work? So, disclaimer, while I don't talk, quote, politics, red versus blue, this senator versus that senator, uh, we do sometimes on the show talk about freedom and liberty uh, in the lens of how government works. Uh, We're not going to do a lot of that today. I'm going to try very, very hard to not go down the government rabbit hole. (laughs) But I I really just do want to talk about this, uh, what is supposed to be a hypothetical pretend scenario. Uh, So... While hopefully today is interesting and a fun take on some strategies and tactics, concepts, um, and operational components, uh, we also will talk just a little bit about that and government stuff. So, Patreon thanks. Uh, Kevin is our newest sign-up uh, and made my whole day today waking up to that email. Thank you so much, Kevin, for helping out with the Patreon subscription that literally publishes the show. Uh, so our Patreon support goes directly into our uh, expenses behind the scenes here for the show. Um, during the show, if you realize you want to get a hold of me, the easiest two ways to do that are the long format. If you want to shoot me a long email uh, for feedback for the show or for any other questions, that's going to be pat at utac.io. That's pat at utac.io. That's my email. Uh, the other way to get a hold of me that's pretty easy is on Instagram. Just shoot me a DM. Uh, My page is Uncensored Tactical on Instagram. It's pretty easy. The other housekeeping we're going to do at the end of the show. So here we go. Overview. In the same way that the slaves of the American Civil War... I know, sweetheart. I hear it. Good alert. Leave it alone. In the same way that the slaves of the Civil War era, so roughly the 1860s, the way they used the Underground Railroad, And in the same way that Anne Frank and her family um, and an entire population of Jews hid in attics and basements uh, across Germany, what if, for any reason, a modern group of Americans needed to use an underground railroad to escape an oppressor? Uh, I don't remember who it was, but I'm pretty sure it was a Patreon that uh, brought this up to me, and I thought, fuck yes. So, let's get into it. Take a little sip of my coffee. I know you guys are probably used to me slamming alcohol. It's 11 o'clock in the morning here in Texas right now. We'll try and get a cool guest on for you on the next episode. Maybe I'll get a little more lit. I haven't done that in a long time. Okay, so what are you trying to escape from and what does that look like? Uh, So, I mean, really the... The specifics for the catalyst or the reason almost aren't really important for this episode at all. So uh, let's fucking pick a reason, right? So let's say the free people just want to fucking garden and the government has said gardening is illegal. And if you have ever grown a garden in your life, we're going to kill you. I don't, I don't know. We'll pick something, right? Not really important. So now let's say you want to live and you don't want to turn yourself in. And let's say the purpose of this episode is not how do you fight off an oppressor? Right, so let's say for another scenario for this, I guess, war game would be you have chosen that you are not going to fight a war or a battle or you're not going to do something um, on the offensive. Okay. So how do you live your life now without a job, without internet, without a driver's license? Right. So we're mainly going to talk about two different ways we handle this in this episode. So one way is going to be... Um, what we call a passing citizen. So meaning you're going to employ some tactics and strategies and you're going to make it look like you're towing the company line while, you know, by day, while at night you're you know, engaging in whatever you want to engage in with whoever you want to engage in with. So that's your passing citizen. The other one is, you know, a more literate, I mean, a more literal um, underground railroad, meaning you have to get from A to Z in an oppressive environment, but... We'll cover both of those. 
So in the 1800s, I think it's pretty reasonable to, to guess, uh, maybe I'll have to ask Matt about this, but uh, it's probably pretty easy to guess that in the 1800s, if you had an issue individually with the area that you were living or the state you were living in, you could probably start your life over, two states over, and no one would be the wiser, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there were some documentation issues, um, but I've got to imagine it's easier than, than today. Uh, and there's people I think to do it, people today that, that, that fake their death and that, uh, there's people that start over. Um, but it's gotta take, I mean, it's not something you just snap your fingers to do. It takes research. It takes energy. It takes money. Um, uh, it takes connections. It takes some setup. So we're going to talk about this in the modern frame. Uh, networks are going to be huge no matter what you decide, whether you're going to be a passing citizen or you're going to get out of Dodge and go from A to Z, meaning you go from where you live to a different place that you're living. Either way, networks are going to be huge. Um, services off the book are going to be huge. Doing things, um, without electricity, without internet are going to be huge. Or if you're using internet, it's got to be super duper secure. And that is not my forte, but I know some people that are very good at that. And the last note here for overview is this one's from another Patreon. This is from Neff who says it's for this topic. It's not all about the destination, but every little step down the path that gives power to the individual and takes power away from your oppressor. Right? So this is really the agorist mindset or agorist agorist. Either way you say it, I don't care, which is just peer to peer voluntarily interacting with other humans. Um, and a lot of people think that that's one of the best solutions. I think it's pretty good. And I definitely am not against that. And a lot of people are agorists, 99% of their waking lives, and they just don't know it. So that's a topic for another episode, but that's your overview. So we're going to talk about those two different options. I'm taking another sip of coffee. Segment one. So just the standard getting from basically a slave state to another, uh, phys- getting physically to another more free state or free area. So starting off with networking, it's really hard to do this with zero network. Really, really, really hard. Um, so if we come to real life for a moment, this world's getting fucking crazy. So you should probably have started networking yesterday or years ago. Um, the good news is on the internet. Now you still can connect and build networks pretty freely. I would suggest you get on that hardcore and not just yes, within your neighborhood. Absolutely. Yes. Within your state. Absolutely. And yes, in other parts of the country. Absolutely. And even you, you should be connecting with people in other countries And that's really a good litmus test to see kind of how crazy the world is and in which directions. Uh, And if they're doing something overseas and they're oppressing a population, you can bet eventually it'll probably happen here too. Maybe in a year, maybe in 10 years, but there's a, that's pretty common that that happens all over the globe. So services off the book. So having a network of people that can do things for you without having to log into the internet or without having to pay taxes on it or without having to write up receipts for it, that's going to be huge. And that comes with networking. And again, your local community is probably where you're going to need to start and getting in touch with real humans who are really like you is just the fucking best. I love all my internet friends and they've been a big part of my life for the last few years. And we I've leaned on them heavy. We've gotten a lot of value from one another. Um, but real life friends who when something goes bump in the night, they can show up to your door that's really fucking cool too. So start networking. All right. So there already are today people using underground railroads. We just don't call it that. And the media doesn't call it that. So there are people, especially if you look at the Southern border of the U S but in other places too, you have people hiding in cars in hidden compartments. You have people jumping border walls. You have people digging tunnels. You have people stowing away on ships. You have people flying in. You have people boating in. Um, you have people showing up in cargo containers from overseas and that's really saying something because if that shit's going on today for people trying to get to this company, that's weird because this country is out of its fucking mind lately. 
Um, I, I can't fucking imagine living in some other places overseas. That's just, that's bizarre to me. That's so fucking weird <laughs> that they're coming here to get away from the crazy. That's fucking weird. Um, so the point is, those tactics are out there. They're known. You can look them up on Google. You can look them up on Instagram. You can still buy paperback books on, you know, hidden compartments. And uh, you can read articles about um, a lot of people in the drug game uh, use hidden compartments quite a bit. Uh, so they're out there. And again, we kind of touched on the bases there, meaning you can create a hidden compartment in a car. You can create a hidden compartment in a boat. You can fly in. You can boat in. You can walk in. You can go through a tunnel. You can pay a mule to take you. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting yourself in a shipping container, but you can do that too. Uh, So there's ways to get from A to Z that happen every single day today. Cool. Cover that. Let's go a little bit deeper here. So you could hide in fast transportation, right? That's probably your best option. If you can reasonably hide yourself, the transportation is relatively quick. Um, I mean, there's pros and cons, but usually uh, the more involved and the faster the transportation, usually the more regulation and oversight. So it's probably pretty tough to be a stowaway on a commercial airline or jet. Uh, Airports are pretty much locked down. Um, Give me one second to read my notes here. I'm talking faster than I'm reading. Okay, so things like, uh, depending on the level of absurdity, in this pretend scenario or, you know, semi real scenario. So things like random vehicle checkpoints, those already exist for one reason or another. Uh, They actually did exist just for freedom of movement. There were people very recently last year, uh, police were shutting down the borders of States, whether legal or illegal. They didn't care. They did it for their paycheck and they were told to do it, but they, they did checkpoints, not allowing certain people into certain States in the country. Fucking wild. So that happens now. So in some cases, it might be good enough to get into a car in Florida as a passenger and to be driven all the way to Washington State. You might be able to do that totally scot-free, under the radar. Uh, But like I said, with a vehicle checkpoint, that might not be good enough. So you might have to be, you might have to conceal yourself within a hidden compartment inside the car. Uh, So we said hidden compartment like 10 times. We're going to move on from that. Ah, sorry about that. Uh, I can tell you from person, this is a new one, new concept here for covert or overt travel. I can tell you from personal experience from my time in law enforcement that the homeless community is really interesting and really unique. Um, maybe I'll do a whole show topic on that later. Let me highlight this in my text today. Um, especially when you're dealing with extra unclean homeless people. Um, and it's also uh, icing on the cake if they're if they have mild psychological issues. So nothing like aggressive or angry, but just like extra odd, right? Like people that just they can care for themselves. They know where they're going. They know what they're doing, but they're just really out there. Um, law enforcement don't really want. I mean, law enforcement officers are people. So as a human, it's tough to deal with someone who's just really fucking odd. That just can't follow a conversation, talking to themselves, right? Uh, so it's difficult to deal with those people. And it's difficult to say, I mean, I've done it myself. I've talked to homeless people. And I'm like, hey, do you have an idea with you? And they're talking about outer space and the moon and the government and conspiracies. And I'm like, bro, do you just have an ID with you? And they're like, this and that and Mars. And I'm like, okay, have a good night. So it's not worth the effort for me. And those conversations, uh, they're really difficult. And especially, like I said, if they're peaceful, and especially if they fucking smell really bad, there is a lot of incentive for me as a police officer in this pretend scenario. There's a lot of incentive for me as a cop to go, I'm just not dealing with this. He's not hurting anybody. He's gross. I don't want to be around him. Okay, guy, have a good night. So that's a really slow method of transportation, especially if you're moving across the country or across multiple states. Um, But you can, you are basically, you're hiding in plain sight while you uh, transport yourself, which is nice. So pros and cons to both of these options. If you're a stowaway, you are beholden to whoever is stowing you away. Uh, If you're a stowaway, you're probably also not supposed to be there. 
Um, so you might do it with or without the knowledge and consent of the person operating the transportation system. So there's some pros and cons there. You are really a temporary captive um, and you are basically surviving at the whim of that transportation operator. God, that scares the shit out of me, especially if you're in a compartment in a car and that car crashes. Holy crap. Talk about claustrophobia to begin with is uh is difficult for some people but i couldn't imagine doing that and then feeling the car like going off the road and being about to crash oh my god i'd fucking piss myself so uh the homeless person route really slow if you're dealing with people and you don't want to deal with them and you want to add that layer of camouflage so to speak you can be really smelly and really dirty um and you're going to be really sweaty uh but if you like fucking camping and being outdoors <laughs> that might be one way to use this um this hypothetical modern underground railroad is just act like you're fucking homeless and weird and just walk and just go uh, that also gives you a good cover for being without an id so if you do get stopped at a checkpoint or by law enforcement or by someone and they say who are you and if you're masquerading as a crazy person you a don't have to answer but b if they rifle through your bags and your belongings and they don't find an id that's a good piece of cover because, oh, I'm homeless. I live on the street. I'm crazy. I don't have an ID. So those are two concepts for you. Next one, uh, we talked, we briefed it a little bit, the water. That's the last fucking place you'll find me. I hate all bodies of water with the exception of swimming pools. I just, and I don't hate it because of, people always assume that, not always, but often they'll go, oh, it's because you must have had such a hard time in the Coast Guard. Well, no, that's not it. I didn't like the water much when I joined the Coast Guard but I knew that they would probably let me jump out of helicopters with machine guns. So I took the good with the bad. So I don't like the water, but as I learned to operate on the water as a government agent, uh, I learned that there's some really fucking cool, unique jurisdictional and patrol and operational um, pros and cons to that. On the water, checkpoints are very difficult to set up and they're very expensive and difficult to maintain. And it's really hard to do it at 100% level. Um, not always, but you can often either, whether you're swimming or managing a small craft, you can almost go into the water or shore your, put yourself on shore and get out of the water anywhere that there's coastline. Again, there are exceptions, things like, you know, sheer cliffs and rocky outcrops and icebergs and all that shit. But for the most part, anywhere in modern, you know, the continental U.S., for the most part, if you're on water and you see land, you can get yourself on land somewhere. So that's nice. You can stop and start your journey as long as there's shoreline in sight, for the most part. Uh, radar is not what you think it is on the ocean. Uh, so it's not that every single boat is tracked. As a matter of fact, government boats with government radar and government GPS often can't even be tracked by the government. Oh my God, shocker. Uh, so <laughs> public service announcement. The government is not what it seems. Go figure. And they are not all-knowing and all-powerful. Uh, so knowing those things and having an insider with that information can really help steer, uh, no pun intended, can help steer your voyage if you are using underground rail railroad to get from A to B. So the speed is good, um, but it brings with it uh, some attention. Going slow takes a long time, and there's a longer chance you can be discovered, but it's less conspicuous. And again, there's all sorts of layers you can add, um, but it's really unique. So consider what some of those pros and cons might be for you, for your personal situation. You have kayaks, you have canoes, you have swimming. You, I wouldn't want to swim hundreds of miles, but you can swim some places. Uh, you have, uh, fuck, what was I going to say? You can bring your whole family with you on one vessel, or you can split up people on different vessels. Uh, you can have vessels inside of other vessels, so you can put a jet ski on the back of your boat and you can split up. Uh, you can sleep while you travel pretty safely. Uh, you can use the cover of uh, rain and snow and storms and all sorts of shit uh, to kind of guard your travel. Really cool stuff there. Uh, so that's something that I would definitely consider. Not me personally, I hate the water, but that's something I'd consider um, for planning purposes for you if we were doing this pretend modern underground railroad
So there are tactics, there are techniques, there's ways that you can do this. The networking helps. Having money helps. Um, if you can buy a nicer boat that won't sink, that'll really help you. Uh, so in the meantime, while we're not um, not as overtly oppressed, because there's no fucking doubt that that's going on right now, but while you're still able, I would get out of fucking debt, I would save some fucking money, I would make more money, and I would build a community of people um, that are like you. Really, the humans should be doing that anyways. Jesus, what a weird world we live in. Okay, second segment two. This is, we're going to talk about living as a passing citizen. So this is not so much the historic Underground Railroad, getting people from A to B secretly. This is a modern take on it, meaning there's no, maybe there's nowhere to go. So maybe the railroad doesn't get you from A to Z. Maybe the railroad is you complying somewhat and acting like a passing citizen by day, but being involved with the people in the th- in the activities that you prefer as a human at night. I'm going to drink some more coffee and we'll dig into it. I'm going to skip a couple notes here. That's why you're hearing a pause. I'm trying very hard to not go too far down a rabbit hole of uh, ranting. (laughs) So give me a second. Okay, let's start here. So just like during alcohol prohibition in the U.S. Don't rant, don't rant, don't rant. Okay, we'll cover that later. Just like during alcohol prohibition in the U.S., There were people smiling through gritted teeth at how proud they were at their local police officers for violently seizing and destroying people's property, their liquid property, right? Those same people that were smiling through their teeth at their and praising their police officers went to secret clubs at night and got fucking lit on alcohol. Damn it, I knew I should have had a drink for this episode. That would have been so fitting. Uh, So... They were a perfect example of the passing citizen. You, I mean, if you went out in town and you, let's say, worked for the government, which, don't rant, you worked for the government, you'd probably not be in good standing if you said, this government's fucking insane, I can't believe that you're outlawing alcohol and arresting people for having alcohol. That probably wouldn't be a good career move. And there's things like that. That happened today. We're going to get in, we're going to talk about that at our conclusion, but that's happening today. So they're passing as a citizen during the day because it's in their best interest to survive. And then they're dealing with the people that they like in the, in the environments that they like doing the things they like and victimizing no one at night. It's a perfect example of the passing citizen. How did that work? That worked with networks that worked with communities. Um, and that worked with taking some risks and, uh, setting up coded language is good. Coded or hidden signals are good. Um, having money always fucking helps, um, and setting up places that are hidden and layered and secret and clubs and organizations that, you know, that promote one thing publicly, but do something different privately. And I don't mean in a negative way. I mean, you promote a face of your bar where you don't serve alcohol and then at night you serve fucking alcohol. So all those things are, I mean, I've said it 10 times this episode having money and power and wealth and being debt-free and having a strong community all is going to help you. Listen, that's going to help you whether the fucking end of the world happens or not. So we should be doing those things. Uh, but I would su- suggest looking into that and God, I, I should have had Matt on this episode. Fuck. Uh, but the historical precedent for that is it's not just the slaves that were oppressed. All sorts of people get oppressed all the fucking time. Okay. Careful. Don't rant. Um, so this segment again is how do I continue most of my life as normal, but also engage in the things that are illegal or oppressed at night? Uh, I had a discussion with a a buddy of mine yesterday on this show topic. He's a Patreon supporter as well. And he said the history of the gay community is a great example of that because very recently and still actively around the globe, um, the gay, gay communities were oppressed. Like you could be beheaded or killed or imprisoned for that or fi- excuse me or fired from your job that's not so much the case in the US anymore um, I think that they are 
I, I think I've seen tons of examples that they are pretty much free to do whatever they like and talk about their sexual preferences openly in the office place and on TV and in the media. And uh, <laughs> I don't remember the last time someone in the U.S. got arrested for being gay, which is a good thing. Uh, so that's another really cool example of and really modern example of people acting as a passing citizen. So it's not that you want to, even even while it was maybe not illegal, but frowned upon in the U.S., the gay community had their own coded language. They had their own, for lack of a better term, secret meeting places. They also were acting as, a lot of them were acting as a passing citizen during the day and then engaging in whatever they wanted during the, the nighttime. So this is kind of a, I mean, while it while it was frowned upon and not illegal, so that stage of our history and timeline, that's really interesting. Um, and I think that a lot of fuck, a lot of people this very day today are doing that. They're living as a passing citizen. They're not voicing their opinions and their thoughts and their ideas in the workplace or in public because they could be canceled. They could be fired. You know, they could be ostracized. Or they could be made fun of. So they do, they disengage with the humans around them during the day and they just live this blank vanilla stare during the day. And at nighttime, they get on social media they, with their in group. And they talk about what they want. They go where they want and do what they want with who they want. That fucking sucks. That's crazy. And a lot of us are living that right now. We don't speak our mind because we're afraid that we're going to get fucking canceled or fired or, you know, ostracized. That sucks. That's a shitty way to live your life. And that is not, I mean, America wasn't a free country to begin with. Uh, but it certainly fucking isn't if that's the way you have to live your life every day of the week today. You go to a fucking job that you hate. Uh, totally shameless plug here. I'm writing a book on that, and I think you guys are going to really like it. We took it. I waited on the outline. I was going to publish it a couple months ago, but it was missing something, and I found out what that missing thing is. So I'm doing some rewrites right now, and I think it's going to be well worth the wait. But back on topic. Going to a job you fucking hate, being around people that you can't be yourself around, having very little time to yourself after work, so that you can engage in some things that you kind of like with some people, that's a shitty fucking life. Sorry if this is a, a hard dose of reality for some listeners, but that sucks. So maybe this is a dose of perspective for you to maybe rethink some of that. There are options. There are ways you can leave your bureaucratic employment. There are ways that you can start a side hustle. There are ways that you can make a lot of fucking money doing things that make you a lot happier. Or you can make less money and be just as broke and you can change your lifestyle to make you happier. A lot of, I know people in my life that make six figures or more or seven figures that are completely fucking broke and they live paycheck to paycheck and they're miserable. So I think starting to be more fluid when we troubleshoot our income, our expenses, our living situation, our options. Um, I, I really do think that we've been kind of corralled or funneled into a certain type of lifestyle. And I think that with the resources on the internet and especially a big shout out and a thanks to one of my, maybe a 10 year mentor, mentor now, Jack Spierko over at the survival podcast, he talks a lot about lifestyle design. So instead of saying, I have this job, I'm in this job, I get paid pretty well. It would be hard to find another job because I'm stuck in this job. I can't move to another state. I can't move to be near family. Um, instead of that situation, you might want to start thinking, I'm building a side business because I want to turn it into a full-time business because I want to move across the country and I don't want to have to rely on the employment of somebody else. So I'd like to start my business and design my business and design my lifestyle so that I can make money as long as I'm connected to the internet meaning I don't have to physically show up at a fucking office every day and I'm not beholden to my boss to say, no, you can't do distance work. You have to be here. So, uh, that's the other thing too, about designing your home, right? So a lot of people just say, oh, what can I afford that's near my work? Then you get stuck there and you go, well, I have these payments and it's so hard to sell the house and get a new mortgage and it's exhausting and I have this job and I have to live near my job. Well, instead, like I said, if you are designing your lifestyle instead of letting your lifestyle design you, you can say, great, I'm working on my side hustle to build widgets or I don't know, do digital artwork on my, on my laptop, right? So I can do that from anywhere in the world as long as I have internet. 
So you wouldn't want to necessarily move into a, in some cases you would, some cases you wouldn't, but if you like traveling, you probably shouldn't buy a huge house that takes tons of maintenance with a huge yard that takes tons of maintenance. And you probably wouldn't want to live by yourself and have a hundred animals to take care of because now you're beholden or enslaved to those animals. Meaning if you want to take a vacation, you can't unless you get someone to take care of your farm for you. And that becomes its own headache, right? So you're trading one, one problem for another. But in this scenario, if you're doing your lifestyle planning and you have your laptop and you have your internet, maybe you get a small plot of land and you put a fucking RV hookup pad on it and you put your tiny house there. And now if you want to travel, you pay someone once a week to come by and cut the grass, big deal, right? So build your lifestyle to fit what you want your lifestyle to be like, instead of thinking about where you're at and realizing how shitty it is and how difficult it would be to change. Uh, And everyone doesn't want to travel. Some people would fucking love to live on a two or three acre little homestead or farm, right? Farmstead. If that's the case, you could probably still have a nine to five job or maybe a job where you work four days a week, or you might even have a part-time job somewhere, which would be great working two or three days a week doing consulting or something easy where when you're done for the day, you can come home, manage your farm and uh, take care of the animals at night and in the morning. And you can do whatever fucking side hustle or full-time hustle you want at home. So really now your job supports your lifestyle. Um, Your job is like an, an addition to your lifestyle. It's not you have your job and your life outside of that is what you have left. Now it's I choose to go into an office two or three days a week because that supplements my income and the rest, the lion's share of my time is up to me. So thinking about multiple income streams is huge. Thinking about the type of house or home that you choose or the size of your lot or the size of your house or what additions you add on to it. That's huge for lifestyle design. So I know we're talking about an underground railroad, railroad, but part of it is what if there's nowhere else to go? You still have to live your life the best you can. So move it. This is really big in the Liberty community right now. Intentional communities, I think is the future a hundred percent. And that's my new lifelong goal is to be in an intentional community. And I've started doing it now. I, I live in Texas with a good friend of mine and we now have our two person community basically, or two family community. Uh, So we're on the same little plot of land here. We support each other. We're bringing value to one another. We're helping one another and we're choosing to be here. So this community basically just doubled in size from one family to two families. Um, And I I love it. I couldn't be happier. Couldn't be more thankful. So my goal is to spread that. So if we can get some neighbors in the area that are fucking all in on freedom and about uh, self-ownership and about bringing value to the community Oh God, that'd be fucking great. And a lot of people out here are like that already. Um, I just want fuck more of it and more concentrated. So back on task here. Um, this is, these are some examples of living as a passing citizen during the day and doing whatever the fuck you want anyways at night. That too requires some coded language. It requires maybe not secretive, but protected communication. So things like small, even though almost everything on the internet is maybe not actively watched 24 seven, but a lot of it is actively recorded 24 seven. So even though that happens, there are still groups where you can pretty much say what you want to the people that you're, that you like, and that doesn't really get out to the public at large. Uh, So the difference between making Instagram post about your beliefs or sharing it in a small discord group. So passing citizen is, I think what a lot of people fucking do today So if there is nowhere to go, again, start designing your lifestyle. All right. Two segments left. Maybe two. We'll see how it goes. Take a sip of coffee. You're being a good girl, Hero. Working very hard. Good girl. I noticed about a week ago that she is... Her at rest position is like, look left, look right, breathe heavy, look left, look right. So we're trying to get her comfortable and we're trying to encourage her when she's quiet and relaxed and being still. 
uh, because as a service dog, she'll be spending a lot of time in public. She already does. So I would rather her spend her time in public uh, under my chair at a restaurant, like napping, rather than, <laughs> you know, looking left and right. There's a time for that, but uh, probably not most of the time. Sorry for the sidetrack. All right, maybe two sec- segments left. So this segment is on mutual aid and homes- homesteading. We kind of got off track and covered this a little bit ago, but let's see where my notes take me. So you should have been doing this fucking yesterday. Uh, it's, it is going to be so, it's, it's impossible. You can't be self-sufficient and live in a big city. Can't do it. If you can't grow your own food, or if you don't have access to people who grow their own food, game over, right? I, uh, recently moved from, uh, basically Tampa and St. Pete in Florida. And I lived on a peninsula that was on part of another bigger peninsula. So it was a huge sprawling urban city and, there was no option to get your food anywhere besides the grocery store or a restaurant. So when these government lockdowns hit in 2020, you didn't have a choice. You can go to a restaurant and put on a mask or go to a grocery store and put on a mask. There really wasn't any third option. Um, and I wouldn't even count like ordering food in as an option. That's a expensive as fuck and B, uh, largely unhealthy if you're ordering probably ordering food from restaurants for breakfast lunch and dinner so when you live in a city your options for freedom are largely reduced so i'm not saying that you have to move out onto a farm tomorrow what i am saying is consider where you live and if you're able to either start doing some very small scale homesteading um, if and if you're stuck you can do some apartment steading i did an uh, episode on that recently A lot of people really really liked it, so maybe we'll do some more of that. Start apartment steading. If you're able to start homesteading on a a small scale, go for it. It's so rewarding, and it's not for everybody, but for me, it's fucking really rewarding, and I love it. If not, try to get access to those people. So make those trips out, you know, a little bit away from the city and try and meet some people, build some communities, see what you have in common with them, and try and grow that. Seriously, it could save your life. Uh, so there's something, uh, let me see my notes here. I'm going to recap. So we said a quote earlier, uh, from a Patreon supporter, Neff, who said, it's not about the destination, but every little step of self-sufficiency along the way. Um, so it's, it's the problem is, or another, let me see. I'm sorry. I'm getting tongue tied guys, but I am going to keep this really real. I'm just going to read my note. I don't know where it's going. It's becoming self-sufficient and self-reliant and building communities. That's the direction. Uh, And that's something that a lot of people get wrong about the cutting edge of some of these groups in the freedom movement. And it's really hard to generalize, but some small groups in the freedom movement um, are fucking law. Go figure. I'm sure you're shocked, but the media has largely mislabeled them as uh, greedy or selfish. Every single person I know who is at the most radical ends of freedom and liberty, meaning I don't want anyone in fucking charge of me. I just want to be left alone. Every single person in my life, and there are many of them who fit that bill, every single one nonstop praises themselves and their friends and our our circles with helping others and lifting others up and bringing value to others. It's fucking insane. I, I stopped watching the news a long, long time ago, but I do know that the media still paints uh, like people in the prepper community as you know selfish and hoarders when it is <laughs> provably within seconds. It's provably the opposite. Uh, so being self-sufficient and being self-reliant helps you help your community because you can't fucking do it if you're relying on other people. So the media tells you that people that don't want to pay taxes, people that store their own food, they're selfish. Uh, Yeah, I'm sure you're shocked that that is not correct. Again, everybody I know in the freedom community, all we want is to not be ruled over and we want to build communities. I, honest to God, I mean, right hand, I, I swear to your God, whoever that is, 
I don't have a single friend in the freedom community that says, I want to be left alone. I don't want anyone to bother me. And I don't like helping people. Fucking never met somebody like that. Okay. I'm doing a little bit of ranting. Believe me, it could have been worse this episode. It could have been much worse. So uh, I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole much further, but any step you can take towards fixing your own shit, making your own shit. I mean, fixing. I don't mean, well, I guess I do. Accidental inclusion. Here we go. So fixing your own items that you own, fixing your own mental health and your own relationships, um, and asking for help with that. That's huge. Uh, making your own money, making your own food, storing your own food and water and tools. Those are all huge steps towards freedom. So in the tactical lock picking classes that I teach, it's not just that you have this skill set. So now if you're locked out and you have your tools, you don't have to call a locksmith and pay that locksmith. And it's not just that you don't have to wait the time for a locksmith to come help you out, even if they do it for free, right? So there's a, there's a time loss. There's a money loss. There's both of those put together. And then there's the freedom of self-reliance, meaning I'm able to solve this problem. So I'm going to solve this problem. That's huge in America right now. That's not very common that people have that mindset. And I wish people would do more of it. I rem- honest, <laughs> honest to God, I remember uh, a couple years ago uh, when I was living with someone and I said, this fucking, little, you know, the little sink spray or faucet that's got like the ex- ex- expandable or retractable hose that you can pull it out of the sink and it kind of zips and you can spray all the dishes with the little, you know, handheld pistol shaped hose thing. I said it like 10 times. I'm like, this thing sucks and it's not very good and it drips. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, oh my God, for the last decade, I've been trying to be more reliant. I'm like, I'm going to fucking fix this myself. So I YouTubed it and I went out and bought the supplies. I went back to my little apartment and I fixed it and I loved it. It was the experience of being self-sufficient or self-reliant, whichever term you want to solve that problem to not have to pay someone, to not have to wait for someone, and to not be beholden to someone to do it for you because you're inable or, or incapable. Man, that feeling was just fantastic. I know, right? A little fucking sink hose. Would, Pat's an idiot, right? And that's what makes him happy? Yes, that's what made me happy. <laughs> so there's been a lot more instances like that where I've been learning to be self-sufficient. Um, but man, that's huge in America today. Okay. It got a little ranty, but not as bad as I expected. Hopefully. If you have feedback, please send it. Hit me up on a DM on Instagram at Uncensored Tactical or for long format, especially feedback for the podcast here, you can email me, pat at utac.io. Let me read this last last segment here. All right, so this is a recap. I might have said all these things, but I'm just uh, I'm gonna read these bullet points. No matter what the pretend or real scenario is. You should start have you should have started networking yesterday. No matter what the pretend scenario is here, you'll need money, influence, wealth, some level of that. The more that you have, the better. If you don't have it, having access to people that care for you that are in your community that have those things, that's good too. In any case, in this pretend scenario, stay strapped or get clapped. I get people probably once a month, I'll get a message on Instagram. Do I buy this gun or that gun? And I say, how many guns do you own? And they're like three, four, five, whatever. And I say, great. Take all that fucking money you're going to spend on a new gun and go buy training. Uh, I don't need to hammer that one home, but I am going to do more episodes on that in the future. hundred percent. In any case, whatever goes on in this country or other countries today or in the future, Having some basic abilities to either encrypt or encode your messages to people, especially across long distances, is going to be a big fucking deal. Um, I I can watch probably, I can watch eight hours of YouTube documentaries a day on encryption and encoding and secret messages, and I probably wouldn't get bored of it for a long time. Uh, when When I take road trips, I really recharge my mental batteries. I love it. And anytime I can do the missing person podcasts or the uh, unsolved mystery stuff or the encoding and encrypting messages, that stuff, I don't know what it is. That just tickles the sweet spot in my brain. I fucking love it. So we're going to be doing some, some of that stuff in the future. Oh, we're going to be doing that in the, uh, 
the UTAC group coming up. So the Uncensored Tacticals online, very small, uh, exclusive training group. It's a private group. We're going to be doing uh, two live hour-long video sessions a month. One will be with me. One will be with whoever else we pick from the tactical world or the preparedness or emergency world. It's going to be some really cool shit, but it is very small scale, meaning uh, there's only going to it's only going to, be, going to be me and 12 other people, and we're all going to collaborate together on projects. That's coming up very soon for a very reasonable price, uh, but if you don't jump in on that quickly, you're going to lose your seat. 12 people max, six of the seats are already sold. I think I keep bumping the mic. Sorry about that. Okay, so encrypted and encoded language is going to be a big fucking deal. I love that shit. Uh, I might start folding that into the show here soon. I might That might be a lot of fun. Okay. So a lot of this stuff is going on today in this country. A lot of this stuff has gone on historically at a large scale in this country. And a lot of this stuff absolutely happens all around the globe every single day of the year all throughout all of history so i don't like fear porn uh, and this is not oh my god run for the hills this is oh my god you should make your life better and i know it it started out as a kind of hypothetical how would this work and i think we covered that but um i really don't want it to have to work i really just want to build our communities today so we can avoid some of this large-scale oppression So it's not fear porn. It's as clear as day that this shit's going on right now. And I have, uh, I have like two or three more notes that are really ranty that I'm not going to read. So let's close out with this uh, disclaimer and with with some housekeeping. So this disclaimer is, I do interact with a lot of people, whether you're government or not, whether you're law enforcement or not, military or not. Um, I got an email from a a nice fellow the other day who wanted some training and he said, (laughs) Uh, I think he said, I, I plan on working for the NSA someday. Do you still want to train me? And I'm like, I, I, I work with people that want to learn. So I don't hate people that are cops. I don't hate people that work for the government or the military. I can be against a system and I can be pro the humans that are a part of that system. So that's my stance on it. And I want to be really clear about this part too. If you're freaking out and you're like, hey, I came here for lockpicking or shooting or tactics or driving or whatever, and Pat has these crazy fucking views, if you don't understand my views, send me an email. If you do understand them and you hate them, send me an email. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Uh, If you're not sure what my views are and you just want me to say it black and white to you, send me an email. Um, I am happy to talk about all that stuff with you guys. I try not to do too much of it on the show. I know I fucking failed today. I I did a lot of that, but how do you avoid it? We're talking about Underground Railroad, meaning it starts because of oppression. We need to escape oppression. So, yeah, we talked about it a little bit today. But, again, for the third or fourth time, it could have been worse. I had a lot of bullet points I didn't read because I thought better of it. <laughs> so let's move into the housekeeping. I just told you how to find me, pat at utac.io. That's my new email address. Instagram at Uncensored Tactical. That's where I'm at a lot. So some free ways that you can help us if you found value in this episode. And I try to bring value to every single episode, whether it's real value with a tactic that you can add to your life today, or whether it's just a laugh, or whether it's a piece of perspective that will help you. So if you found some value in today's show, here's some free ways that you can help us. Share this episode with at least one person that you know uh, that you think might like it. Even if they already listen, send them a note and say, hey, this was a good one. Uh, Like and subscribe on whatever platform you're on. That would help us a lot. And if you want to take 30 seconds out of your day to write us an Apple podcast review or a review on any platform, that would really help us. I don't ask for that a lot, but that would really help. Uh, It is under construction and we're building it, but go check out the website. Um, especially I like the courses tab. If you click on training, uh, I might change that training tab to say courses. I always say it wrong. If you click on the training tab, that'll bring you to our training courses homepage. After, uh, we have all of our courses for the year listed on there. So you can s- click the buttons and sign up. We also, after we complete each course, I do an after action review, whether it's a podcast or a YouTube video, um, or just a photo gallery of how the course went. I like that because that shows what Uncensored Tactical is busy doing in real life and how we're busy training. It also shows you what you could expect at a future course. Um, 
And it's good for the students if you tell your buddies, hey, I went to this course. Oh, here's what it was like. And they send them a link to that courses page. That's, I really like that format. So poke around the website. Um, sign up for our email subscription list. If you don't see that link, don't worry about it. I'll be fixing it soon. Uh, like I said, bear with us. It's under construction. But go ahead and poke around there a little bit. If you're able and you want to give us even more value back in return, our Patreon is out for less than half of a cup of shitty coffee a month. So just for two bucks a month, you can help support this content and keep it going. I still lose money on this podcast. Um, it's free for everyone to listen to, but it costs a lot of money behind the scenes. So it is a big deal. Kevin was our subscriber. Uh, I think today or yesterday he signed up for the $2 level. That was awesome. That really made my day. Uh, Patreon.com backslash UTAC will bring you right to our sign-up page. It means a lot to me. Next, uh, value for value. If you like the show or the content here, even if you're not really interested in lockpicking, it is a big return on investment uh, to have the book or to gift it to somebody or to read it. Um, I recommend in the in the age of digital book burning that you get the paperback version, uh, but the digital version is really good too. I've had a, a lot of compliments on it, and I don't want to jinx it, but the book's been out, I think, almost a year now, and I haven't, honestly, I have not received one bad piece of feedback, and that's quite a feat for an almost 300-page technical manual. So grab the book. You can find the links on our website. Just click the book tab. Click the courses tab. We just talked about that. If you want to get some in-person training, we just had a fire sale course pop up. Uh, we're going to check out using this current facility um, out on the farmstead for a training course uh, for home base for tactical lock picking. So we're going to add some new obstacles um, and we're going to outfit this place to get some even more out of our training. If you want to come down, it's going to be August, I think 21st and 22nd. We are offering a sale and it's only for students. This is going to be the smallest course I think I've ever taught. Um, but I really like the small and student instructor ratio, inst instructor to student ratio. Uh, and I think I might bring at least one assistant instructor with me for the course. So it's going to be tons of one on one coaching time. Uh, sign up quick. The link is on the website. Just click our courses tab and scroll down until you see the August Texas course availability. Within the month, UTAC group is going live. It's going to be 35 bucks a month. You get unrestricted access 24 seven to our private discord group. There is no contract. You don't pay a year in advance. If you want to leave, you just leave, but there are only 12 seats available and six of them are already sold. Um, stay tuned literally any day. Now we're going to make the big public announcement for signups. Uh, lastly, but definitely not least, uh, and maybe the, the most important, if you want a high quality, to, a high quality dog or high quality dog training, um, go check out fortresscanine.com. If you're going to buy one of their dogs, go talk to Joel who runs Fortress Canine and tell him that Pat sent you and he will get you a discount on your dog purchase for me. In return, he will also give a little bit of uh, support to the show here to keep the show running. So that is right now, that is the only affiliate that I have. Um, I have started getting uh, full disclosure, I have started getting tools at a discount from both um, from Sparrows and from uh, Southern Specialties, and that is to help with our teaching with the courses. So uh, that is a huge deal, uh, and that has been life-changing. I'm so thankful for that. So I do give product reviews a lot, um, and I think it's also pretty clear with both of those companies that I don't like every tool that both of those companies make. I don't carry every tool that both of those companies make. And I will be 100% honest with you, even if I lose that support from them, I'd rather be honest with you guys. Um, and of course, I don't hate either of those companies or um, some of their products I like better than others, but I mean, that's, I'm not selling out, period. I'm just happy to do what I do and I have a passion for it. Okay, lots of housekeeping. Tried not to rant too much. I fucking love all the audience members out there. Thank you so much for spending your time to hang out with me. Again, I love the feedback too. Please shoot me an email. If you're thinking about it, go for it. Um, and if we have anything pending that I haven't gotten back to you for yet, please remember I'm a one-man show. I'm trying to manage like 30 fucking platforms. So sometimes things, I sometimes I have a lot of passion and I want to respond to something, but I think I'll save it. I'll respond later. And I just fucking forget. I'm really sorry. So if you're pending an answer from me, just shoot me a reminder. Okay, folks, until next time, continue asking hard questions. Use smart tactics, even if you don't think you need them, and seek out liberty in everything you do. See you on the next one.